We've all read funny stories about frogs. Why, there's Mark Twain's famous jumping frog of Calaveras County. And the Frog Prince. And who could forget Kermit the Frog? But what about the real thing? Frogs are very unusual animals. They live both on land and in water. Animals that do this are called amphibians. Amphibian comes from a Greek word meaning to lead a double life. Amphibians are the smallest class of vertebrates. Vertebrates are animals that have a backbone. Frogs are the amphibians we see most often, but the frog has other amphibian relatives. Toads, salamanders, and newts. It's easy to mistake a frog for a toad, but if you look closely, you can see some differences. The frog has long back legs for jumping and leaping, while the toad's shorter hind legs are used for quick short hops. Another clue is their skin. The toad's is dry with wart-like bumps. The frog's skin is smooth and moist. Did you know that frogs are ectothermic? That means frogs are cold-blooded animals. Their blood is not really cold, but their body temperature matches that of the air or water around them. You and I are warm-blooded animals. Our body temperature stays about the same, 98.6 degrees, no matter if it's a hot summer day or a snowy winter night. Frogs, being cold-blooded, cannot survive cold winters. In order to protect themselves, they must go to sleep or hibernate until spring. They find dark, damp hiding places where they'll be safe from other animals. Sometimes in a mud hole under a log or a stone. Many frogs take their long winter nap buried in the mud at the bottom of a pond. Hibernating frogs do not need to eat because they have enough fat stored in their bodies to keep them alive. Their hearts beat very slowly during this rest period, so they use up very little energy. They get enough air to live through their skin. Some frogs who live in very hot climates escape the heat by sleeping through the summer. This kind of hibernation is called estivation. Most frogs are at home in a pond ecosystem or community. Everything the frog needs for survival is here. This is a leopard frog. Like all frogs, it must keep its skin wet at all times or it will die. Frogs do not drink with their mouths as other animals do. They get moisture into their bodies through their thin, loose skin. The frog's skin serves another purpose. It helps them blend in with nature. Some frogs can even change colors for more protection. Frogs have many enemies. Large fish, turtles, some birds, and snakes. So they need to move very fast both on land and in water. The frog's back legs are very long and extremely strong, helping him to jump or leap many times further than his own length. The largest frog in the world, the Goliath frog of West Africa, can jump more than three meters or about 10 feet.
In the water, frogs used their webbed back feet to help them swim. This webbing is created by a thin piece of skin connecting the toes together. The frog's short front legs are used for support when the frog is sitting. Its front feet are not webbed and are used for holding on to slippery rocks and putting food into its mouth. Inside the frog's mouth is a long, sticky tongue. Unlike our tongue, it is rolled up and attached to the front of the frog's mouth. When a frog catches its dinner, some favorites being live snails, flies, worms, and beetles, it opens its mouth, quickly flips out its long tongue, and captures its prey. A frog does not chew its food, but swallows it whole. If you watch a frog eat, it closes its eyes and pulls them into its head. This eye blinking helps to push the food down the frog's throat. Frogs need good eyesight to see small insects. Their bulging eyes are almost on the top of their head. They can see in all directions, even behind them. Each eye has three eyelids, an upper and a lower, like you and I do. A third lid covers and protects the eye and lets the frog see underwater. When a frog closes its eyes, it pulls them into its head. Frogs have a nose to smell with, but they cannot smell underwater. Frogs that are night hunters or live underground have a better sense of smell than other frogs. You might think frogs don't have ears because you can't see them. But if you look closely, you will see a circle behind the frog's eye. This is an eardrum that allows him to hear. One sound every female frog listens for is the croaking of a male. This signals that spring has returned to the pond, hibernation is over, and the mating season is here. The frogs wake up and head for the nearest water. Female frogs lay their eggs in the water. Unlike other eggs, frog eggs have no shells. Once the eggs are laid, the male fertilizes them. A dark spot on an egg means the egg has been fertilized. Each female lays several thousand eggs. The eggs, called spawn, are laid in strings or clumps and are protected by a slippery jelly so they won't dry out. Many of the eggs will be eaten by other animals or dry up before they have a chance to develop. This process, where only the strongest members of a species survive, is called natural selection. The developing tadpole, or polywog, feeds off the yolk of the egg. About four to 15 days after fertilization, tadpoles begin to wiggle out of the egg sacs, looking more like baby fish than frogs. They have tiny gills on each side of their body so they can breathe.
They eat very small plants called algae. As the tadpoles get older, they lose their outside gills and grow new ones on the inside of their body. The tadpole's head grows faster than the rest of the body. When a tadpole is full grown, it starts to change into a frog. First, its back legs begin to grow. Then the front legs. In a short time, it grows lungs and loses its inside gills. The lungs make it possible for a frog to breathe air. In time, the tail will become shorter and shorter and finally disappear. Now our tadpole is really a frog. It took only a few months for these leopard frog tadpoles to change into frogs. Other frogs, like this American bullfrog, take two years to change from a tadpole into a frog. This change from a tadpole to a frog is called metamorphosis. Of the over 2,500 varieties of toads and frogs, some can live longer than 20 years, but most die at a younger age. During their lifespan, frogs help to keep the balance of nature by eating many of the insects that could destroy farmers' crops and ruin our gardens. Many superstitions have sprung up about frogs and toads. You can't get warts from a toad. And if you think an ugly frog will turn into a handsome prince with just a kiss, think again. Frogs are fascinating and fun to learn about. You've already learned many things, but there's still a great deal more to discover.